Welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. Today, I'm taking a look at where the game is at. Yes, it's another one of my state of the games. And I'm taking a look at it from the eyes of somebody that's been playing the game for 13 years. No, it's not been 13 years since 2013, silly. But I'm trying to remove myself from the equation and go in and see what are one of these wonderful people going to see that are coming into the game right now for the fly free week and that's what's interest that that's what has me interested and i'm doing it from the point of view of let me take a look at some of the features that we have here in 3.7 that were improvements over 3.6 well, how does that make any sense? Well, it doesn't make any sense, and I'll fill you in along the way what I'm really doing here. So first off, we, we have this new-ish character creator, and all I'm saying is that I can see where they're going with this, and I don't know. I, I'm still going to reserve or withhold my opinion on it because it can get better, but I find it to be not exactly what I want. First off, the choices of starting faces are okay, but not perfect for getting a look of who you are. The coloration and other things that are in the skin tones and the hair is just not within an easy change. Though I know that things are going to get better over time, I'm still looking at it from the perspective of, hmm, how is this really going to work? What I do like in this version is that they do indeed highlight the areas that you are changing, which I really, 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 and I, I like that. I think that's doing us a better service. It was a disservice before that we really didn't know what area we were working on, and now we do. As soon as you move over the different area, you could do it two ways. You could select it from the list outside, or you could select it by touching on the facial part in the actual image or character area. It, it really is a big change, but I haven't been able to really get a detailed character that I would enjoy playing. But again, we're in alpha, not even beta, and we're going to have to let them flesh this out. Now, this is where things start to separate themselves a little bit from what I said. I said that I was trying to look through the eyes of somebody new. And I was under the impression that you could actually get in here and fly the defender. I didn't see it readily, so I just jumped into the game and the next best thing for me, and that was the Freelancer M.I.S. Shortly after picking out my ship, I decided that I needed to go into the verse a little bit more well armed. Now, I have packages that have given me 36,000 credits to start. So I figure I'm going to spend a couple of credits here and get myself a brand new weapon. In the meantime, I'm going to get myself looking all right for the part, and I'm going to change into my rust armor. Now, having made the changes that I needed to to make myself look good, I decided to add a couple of weapons and ensure that I had the right ammo types. Now, looking at my character from the outside, I decided to do a little strutting about to see if there is any change to the Frankenstein-like walk or the stiff walk, marching walk that they had in the game before. And I still find that it is much better than a lot of other games, but my character does take on this marching pose. She just looks a little stiff, like not loose, and I guess that's something that you're gonna get inside of a video game. It's the way that her legs are moving. They really just look like she's marching and not like she's walking with any kind of a relaxed gait. But again, I'm gonna say this. This is a huge improvement over what I thought it was gonna be. And I think it's a much more natural walk than what we're used to. 
Now, having taken care of everything on the outside and still having about a minute and a half to three minutes left before my ship is auto stored, I decided to come over here and see if I can find this interface any more useful than it's been in the past. I know that you can stand right in front of it and click on it and get a much better connection than I did just then. And here I am doing it the second time. There I am. I've got a better connection this time. Now one thing that I think is missing here, you have attachments, weapons, and I think ammo should be separate. It should not be under attachments. Again, we're in alpha. We are not in beta or even release, so these are probably sorting methods that will come out in the future. Nonetheless, I decided to purchase the weapon that I like using in close quarters. And since at some point I might be in caves, I pick up the P4AR Ballistic Desert or Ballistic Rifle Desert Shadow. My god, they have longer names than some of the electronics companies. <laughs> Nonetheless, we got our weapon and we pick up some ammo and we are off to our ship. I must be weird because every time I walk up to my ship, I get almost exactly the same feeling I did that day I stepped into the hangar module for the first time and saw my Aurora sitting there. And it's just, you don't expect everything to be so realistic and so beautiful. CIG truly has done an amazing job at building out these ships. It's probably the most effort that they've put into the whole game so far. We still need a lot more gameplay elements and some older elements that have been in the game tweaked. But the ships themselves have really come forward a huge amount. I remember the first time I stepped into my freelancer. And today, it's just a totally different ship. First off, we don't have those stupid um, canopy rails inside of the windscreen in the front but we still maintain that beautiful look and feel of the original freelancer i absolutely love it i chose my freelancer today and we're going to take it off we're going to look for what is supposed to be oh there it is there's the engine on i hunt around for it for a few minutes every time i jump in i kind of forget where everything is and you can see me looking at all the different dials and switches being a total noob and finally finding it and turning my engines on. And we lift off the pad and I now have a Thrustmaster Warthog HOTUS and the Satek pedals connected to my system. And I find it much, much more, I'm much better at managing my flight characteristics, maneuvering the ship, controlling the ship. Yeah, we'll go with that. And I have to say this, some people are going to be mouse and keyboard, some people are going to be go game controller and keyboard, and some people are going to be HOTUS and dual joystick. There's so many different ways to fly in Star Citizen. There's no right way, but I like that traditional aircraft style with the throttle in one hand and the stick in the other. It just is so much more natural to me, even though I know in real life, as they'll be doing on the SpaceX dragon capsule that's going up to the space station flying with touch screens that's something they don't have in the game right all right so we've set our sights on selling we picked up a mission and let's get on our way and see if we can actually complete this mission today without falling through the floor getting stopped six million times and having any kind of a bug whatsoever A brief jump and a short flight later, we're on final approach into the pickup area here on Selen. Now, this is one of the places I haven't been to before, so it is kind of hilly over here, even though there's a flattened out area for you to land at. Right now, there are three spacecraft here. There is a constellation off to the left. There's an arrow right in front of us, and I believe there's another arrow over there on the platform. We're going to avoid all of them and land closer to our pickup destination over here. And what I'm finding already is that the maneuvering with the new, I guess you could call it the new hover mode. I want to call it the new approach and landing mode. 
is much better than it's been in the past. Now, a couple of things that I try here and I continually mess up is the first couple of times that I go to land, I absolutely mess up turning off the engine. I want to turn it off. Oh, I did turn it off. Turned it off that time. I kind of remember not turning it off, but that was good. And I'm trying to be a good um, starship captain. <laughs> and I'm trying to exit this door and it's just not giving me... There it is. It's you, you still have to be in the perfect location, pointing in the perfect direction to get some of these doors to unlock. And when they do, the animations are actually pretty perfect. All right, there we have somebody's constellation. And we get a glimpse of what I believe is my favorite fighter in the game right now. It is by far not the best fighter in the game. It's not the strongest. It's not the most durable. It's not the most maneuverable. Or it might be. It might be. But the looks and flight characteristics and the two Gatling guns that are on this spaceship in front of us are just absolutely amazing. I love the Anvil Arrow. And if you are just starting out in Star Citizen and you want to have a fighter career, a mercenary, something like that, you can use that ship, although it will be very hard to make money in the early game. That's a ship that later on you get to put inside your Polaris. <laughs> ah, so gorgeous. Yep, I'm not flying you today, hon. I'm flying my equally beautiful freelancer MIS. So we're just going to let it play through over here because we want to be able to get inside this area and out without falling through any floors or having any kind of a glitch like the disappearing box glitch. Now the first thing I want to tell you is once this box is in your hands, whatever you do, do not try to look at your Moby glass the whole time it's in your hands. All right, we get through here and back outside to see one anvil, arrow, and what looks like another one sitting deep inside the platform. Boy, that must have been a bad landing. When they say cut the power just before you land, they don't mean 20 feet to 50 feet above the tarmac. All right, and there is our beautiful freelancer. I would love for them to make something that looks like this that's tremendously big like the freelancer double extra large max <laughs> it's just such a beautiful ship so we're playing through here just so we can get closer oh there was a little bit of stuttering there i forgot about that in this game also sound was off in this game so we did experience some bugs there was a little bit of jittering a little bit of knocking around <laughs> and a lot of sound issues in this playthrough. But I didn't find any play um, issues. Like, nothing stopped me from being able to play the game. And we take our box and accidentally just throw it off to the side. Watch. And this is dangerous because sometimes it will fall right through the floor. I did not mean to do that. I just always get scared that somebody's going to come on my ship when I'm not looking and then cap me right in the head, steal my ship. So I like to keep it locked and ready to go. So I'm taking this box and moving it into this cargo area. And I'm just going to place it. And it's tough. This is another area I feel that they can do better. Which I have to look at the box perfectly to be able to line it up perfectly. But what I'm trying to do with this box is put it on this cargo rack right over here. And it's supposed to hold it in a certain way, but I don't believe cargo racks really have a set use. Oh, it did move it into a perfect view. I didn't even see that the first time. I am having a little bit of issues getting doors to work, and now they're working. That's pretty awesome. All right, we get back in the seat, and then we get back in the air, or I should say in the vacuum, because there is no air in space. You know, that's just a fallacy. It's just that there's so little in space, so little gas, that 
they can call it a vacuum when it's really not. <laughs> okay, we got the ship going. And we're going to be off. And now we're going to go to our corp, to Lyria, a moon of our corp, and bring our box there for a total profit today of just over 2K. Because I wound up spending 4K on a weapon and 21 magazines of ammunition for it. Yes, I'm ready for a firefight. And here we go, setting up our... And look, and this is twice. I have absolutely no issues with the star map. So I, I would knock wood here if it wouldn't send a nasty vibration through the microphone. And now we should be able to just set route, and we did. And if you see, it's going to take us just over 1,100 units of quantum fuel to get there. So this is something that you're going to want to do in a ship that has the range. And I would say this ship... 315P, a Constellation. I don't know what smaller ships would have the range to go this far. Maybe the smallest one that would potentially have the range would be the... Oh, God, maybe it would be the Reliant Core. I'd have to look that up. So very quickly, we're able to get into Quantum. Now, one thing that bothers me about Quantum Drive the last few weeks that I've been playing is the constant and never-ending stops that you have along the way. Interdicted by pirates, pirates, pirates. Finally, you're getting close to your destination, and then you're interdicted by the local militia who want to seek and destroy all pirates and do a manifest search, a cargo search, on your vessel. All of these things aren't really modeled right now. Essentially, you're pulled over, like I am right here, and you're just asked to halt, and something will come up on the screen in a few moments, and it'll tell you to set your throttle to zero or your speed to zero. There it is, max current velocity, 118. And I'm, I'm believing that they want you to stop fully because it goes away when I stop. I do take a look outside to see around me who's there. And essentially it looks like it might be a vanguard and something much smaller, which I'm not able to make out right there, just without my glasses on, that is. So we got ourselves all the way out here, almost our corp, and we get stopped. And then all we have to do is wait for the all clear. I don't find this trip to have been anywhere near as annoying as the trips I was making up to about five days ago, six days ago, before they released this patch. Before they released this patch, you would be stopped maybe four, five, sometimes six times on a single journey between planets within the Stanton system. And that would be, that that's just unacceptable for gameplay. It makes it not fun. And this makes it at least a little bit more understandable, a little bit more realistic. So two jumps and a short flight, and we're almost at our drop-off point over on Lyria, a Shubin mining facility. And that leads me to what I might do for the next episode of seeing what the game is like for newbies. And that might be to grab my prospector and come out here and see if there's anything to prospect. Right now, I'm making most of my money doing short little, well, making short work of any of the baddies that are going to be attacking friends and family and, in other words, doing the, I guess you could call them the intercept missions. They call them beacons. Maybe they call them something else, but it's the alerts where you have to go and rescue somebody because they're under attack by pirates and those can net you a they can net you quite a lot of money also but i'm still not confident in my skills as a fighter pilot within the star citizen universe to actually take a ship out there and potentially lose it i'm finding that those missions are way too unpredictable that the AI could be behaving 100% one moment, and then in the next moment, bam, 
they crash right into you. Both of you dead, mission over, and you're sitting back in your habitat somewhere out there in the Stanton system, cursing the gods for making AI stupid. So here we are approaching our Shuban mining facility. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look for the pad and then we're going to choose to land a little bit closer. Now I'm going to make some comments here about the, about the display. So there's a couple of things that I find should be fixed here. The first thing is the windscreens that are in the game need to be polarized. So they can be a little bit darker yet show what's on the other end through them. And they would be in real life because if you ever had this thing pointed towards a star, they'd need to be super polarized or everybody inside the cabin would be blind. But I'm not talking about the theoretical um, opportunity for a sun to blind you. I'm talking about it from the perspective of being able to see what's on my screen. They need to either have some kind of logic, some kind of AI built into the HUD that automatically changes colors when the background is too bright, or they have to have some kind of polarization on the cockpits that will darken the cockpit so you can see your brightly colored HUD against a darker background. This is something that I've been asking for for quite a long time, and I think it's something that I, I think Zane should be working on that since he's working on the interfaces. And I know interface 2.0 or 3.0 is going to be coming out with one of the future updates, but for me, that's one of the most important things. Another thing is the way that switching views, going from outside view to inside view, resets your view every time. And about how you have to watch the shields being redrawn. And if you had knocked the com text off of your screen, it just suddenly reappears. I'm finding the fact that it doesn't save the state between view switches to be very annoying. And, you know, at first I was able to handle it. And the more I've been playing the game lately, the more I'm starting to get frustrated with it. When I want the calm off, I don't want to read everybody's comments sitting in front of me. I just want them to disappear if they have nothing to do with me. And I'm sure there's a way for me to do it and I just haven't figured it out. But that's one of the things that's annoying. The other one is, let's just face it. I'm going to go back to what I was saying before. You got to have something. You got to have something that makes the HUD easier to read against brighter backgrounds. All right, so here's another quality of life enhancement that we're going to get. And it's when we're making our drop off. And I'm not sure if this is actually a quality of life enhancement or something I just never realized. So when the box, well, when the receptacle opens, the bin, the delivery bin, it just says place right there. I could just click on the word place. I don't have to click on the box and then place it in there. I just click on place and the box goes in. And then we sit here and we wait and wait and wait to find out that we made 6,000 credits, which puts us just about 2,000 ahead of where we started, which I think is actually pretty decent. So where's the game right now? The game is far, far, far away from completion and being a game that you can say is actually full featured, fun and engaging. I, on the other hand, am quite different from most people. I like the game in its current incarnation and will love it over time as it gets better and better. I think that the elements of the game that are in there right now fall short of it being absolutely playable on a daily basis. But I think it's fun to come back to multiple times a week and have fun in your favorite ships, making deliveries, taking on pirates inside of you know with your fighters, or trying to rack up tons of credits by moving cargo from one planet to another. I think those things are fun, but the most fun is always going to be had when you're playing with friends, which we aren't doing in this video. I think that's something that makes this game more playable. And when we're, we're taking off from that first 
base, that first area for where we picked up the box, you did see that there were three people there. I'm sure they were all hanging out on somebody's constellation, the constellation that was there. And I think that is actually something that we should all think of as being why we're here, to play together, to enjoy the universe, the way it's being built by CIG for us. Well, I'm going to set my freelancer down over here, and I'm going to attempt one more thing. And I hope somebody tells me if I'm wrong about this or not. But what we're going to do is we're going to find this nice little flat area over here, which isn't 100% flat. We're going to try to land it. We might get a bounce out of it because gravity here is much lower than on most of the other places in the Stanton system. And we get it right there. And we do bounce and come back down again. Look at that. We're going to put our engines off. And then we're going to walk back. And we're going to make an attempt at logging off in one of these beds, one of these racks. I guess I wanted to climb when I was trying to point to the bottom rack, but this will do. And we lie down. Yep, we wouldn't have gotten undressed. We would leave our boots on and have our sidearm right there. That's exactly how I would rest and relax. But I don't see the interface come up to log off, which is, maybe I did. Maybe it was over there to the side. I saw the little button come up for a second. Nope, not coming up. Not coming up at all. If anyone could tell me if this is working for them, I would appreciate it. Just comment below. So this is my first day in the latest version of Star Citizen, which I believe is 3.7.1. And I believe that this says it all, this black screen. I really enjoyed my time in it, but I don't know. I'll have fun in it, but will my friends? That's a good question. Oh, well, if you like this episode, please click on that thumbs up button below. You know the deal here, folks. And if you do subscribe, please click on the bell-shaped icon to get notified of all my future videos. Really appreciate you watching my videos. Really appreciate you making comments and keeping in touch with me. And I will be back real soon, folks. And with that said, you all be safe out there. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.